What's up everybody? It's been about a week since they started the solar and power wall installs. We're all hooked up. We've had the inspectors come. We're just waiting on our uh, permission to operate from the electric company. You may have already seen the video about the, the solar install. I kind of split this one up so you can see the, the power wall piece in this one. But if you want to see the others, wait till the end of the video. Uh, there will be a link there. I'll probably put it right here as well so you can jump around. But also check out my series. I've got a video series of everything Tesla Solar and Powerwall from the purchasing process through to install. And once we get uh, permission to operate, I will do a bunch of tests and let you know how those go. And as you flip through this, sorry about the change of clothes, but uh, this was filmed over the course of a week or so. Enjoy. This is a real good design on the side of the power wall. Essentially, they just conduit through, um, so you've only got one conduit showing on the outside and the rest of it's gonna be hidden under the uh, under these cover panels here. Pause it here if you're interested in reading the power wall label. And in case anyone's interested, this is what the other side of the room looks like. Uh, still building it out, but it's going to be my workshop. There's some storage back there. This thing's gonna go somewhere else. Gonna build some storage over there. And then we've got the Tesla equipment and my network. So now I'll give you an overview of what the Tesla app looks like. This is on my iPhone. Um, just focus on the, the right side of the screen there. I didn't wanna leave black border, so I'm just leaving the photo of the power wall up. The first thing it shows you when you switch into the solar plus uh, power wall section of the app is the status of the battery. So right now my three power walls are at 44% battery life. If you click on the power flow section there, it jumps into showing you four icons, solar, grid, home, and power wall. And then it shows you how power flows between all of those icons. As you can see right now, based on the way I have the power wall set, power is flowing from both the grid and solar into my home. Nothing's flowing to or from the power wall. If you then click on any one of those individual tabs, it goes into a chart of your usage. It will show you over the day, the week, the month, etc. And as you click those buttons across the top, it will show you from left to right your home consumption, your solar generation, your power wall in and out, and finally your grid usage. So I'll switch to another day here so you can get a view of what that looks like over the course of a day. You know, I get lots of solar generation in the midday and a good majority of that will go into the battery and then it will use that battery as the sun goes down before it goes back to the grid at night. And that basically happens when I hit my backup threshold. Um, here, I think I have it set to 45%. So there's a few different modes of how you can use your power wall. The first is backup only. So it'll charge using solar only up to 100% and leave it there until you have a power outage. The second is what they call a self-powered mode, and that's what I have it set to right now. Basically, you set a reserve what you want to keep for power outages. Right now I have it set at 45%, but I'm going to play with that and test it, and I'll share that with you guys over time. But it will basically charge and use the battery until it hits that 45% threshold, and then keep it at that as a backup. And from what I can see, 45% roughly gets me um, during normal consumption, and I'm still figuring out what normal consumption is, but roughly six or seven hours, but I will continue to test that. You have a mode called advanced, uh, which it allows you to control how power flows to the battery, back to the grid, et cetera, et cetera. Now you'll use this if you have time of use pricing with your power company. 
So in this mode, it allows you to set either balanced or cost savings. Balance is a mix of powering your house after the sun goes down and powering when um, electricity is most expensive and that'll be midday. And cost savings is full on uh, maximize your cost savings. So most of the energy will go back to the grid midday and you may not be powering your house overnight. Then there's a switch for Stormwatch, and basically Stormwatch uses a link to weather data to decide uh, if it needs to change your backup from whatever you have set to 100%. If Tesla sees a storm is coming and you have this turned on, it will switch to uh, maximize your backup. It will charge to 100% if it can get there. Now in this mode, I believe that you're allowed to charge the battery from the grid Tesla has somehow gotten approval from electric companies to make this happen. Uh, but that's something I'm going to have to test. And frankly, I'm just going to have to wait till we get a storm so I can check it. But if you have more information on this one, leave it in the comments below. And lastly is a setting for how it charges your vehicle during power outages. Now, this only works for Teslas, of course, but basically because the Tesla car batteries are so much bigger than the power walls, even with my three, uh, I think it's only roughly half of my car battery. It would quickly drain these if I set if I had it charging from zero to 100 uh, during a power outage. So basically, in this setting, it says, you know, if you set it to 75, it will only use the first 25% of the uh, power wall to charge your car battery and then switch to only running the house. So just to show you uh, how much the car draws, uh, I've plugged in my Tesla Model 3 overnight. I have it set to char start charging around 1 a.m. Uh, it looks like it ran for about three hours here, and it went from my normal nightly consumption, which jumps from you know basically one kilowatt hour to three kilowatt hours, depending if the air conditioning is running, up to 10 to 13. So basically it draws 10 kilowatts and would drain that battery very quickly. So that's what I've got so far. Uh, really having fun making this solar series. If you're enjoying it, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave a comment below if you have more questions on either the power walls or the solar, the install process, the buying process, how they work, and I'll try and work those into future videos. If these videos have influenced your buying decision and you wanna kinda say thank you, Use my referral code for either a Tesla car or any of the Tesla energy products and you'll get a discount or some free uh, supercharger miles and I will get a little kickback as well. Thanks again. Until next time.